The following podcast may contain spoilers. Dear listeners, are you alive? Voltar. <laughs> hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, this is Treading the Path of the Heavens. And we're back again this week with a new podcast uh, about a Korean web novel that um, well, Bill and the, I have recently read. It's the same podcast. Don't let him fool you. It's the same podcast it's always been. However, I mean, well, last week was we did hell too. So, no, like, well, okay. we're back to the regular podcast, except we're in Bizarro Land because it's finally a Korean novel I've not read. Richard, yeah. I thought you were our Korean guy. I'm reading a lot of Korean stuff, just Man. not this one. It's on, yeah. it's on the to read list. I'm on chapter one. And but the thing is, I don't know if you guys read web novels, but it's an ever expanding list of tabs that just grow and grow on your phone or computer or tablet. And sometimes it's hard to get through all of them. Sounds like very hard. I, I mean, it, it sounds like there's a lot out there to choose from and you got to filter in your own way. I feel like they made the application too many tabs specifically for this. It helps out other people. It's just was made for web novels and TV troping, right? Yeah. There may be there may be too many good novels coming out at the same time. Believe it or not. Oh, I, well, that just means you can build them up to Vim. Well, I mean, like as more people are being able to do this full time, uh, we're getting like more more content out of them, and it's drawing more people into being translators, and that's like opening the market into more stuff. So, like, we're just. <laughs> We're just getting more stuff translated. I like, and it's just such an untapped market over here at this point. It feels like we're in a golden age because there's always a new one popping up. Like you could just look at like, like any subreddit or forum. Like go check out like slash our novel translation. There's a new. There, I'm literally seeing novel titles I've never even heard of pop up. Yeah, and people are reading it. Mad reading up the hell books. out of it. Reading the hell out of it. No, I mean, yeah. Overgeared just started up recently. I just started that. It's great so far. I'm like only a few chapters in. And How I mentioned that mostly because it is another novel that is being translated by the person, uh, by the novel, or that translated the novel that we're uh, talking about today. Oh, was this a rainbow turtle? This is a rainbow turtle. Oh, Praise man. the orc. Oh, man. It's a mark of quality, it would seem. It is a mark of quality. And... um <laughs> We kind of skipped ahead a bit, but I am Jonathan Kenny. I'm joined by my co-hosts. I'm Richard. I'm Bill. And our perennial guest. I'm Seth. I'm a guest. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Seth, you're you're like a, a host uh, in our hearts. I'm a but a de facto host. guest. I'm I'm a host in my heart because I also am a host and have been on every episode of the show, even the ones where I'm not. That's technically true. Uh, as creepy as that sounds. Mm. <laughs> Even I don't think you one. got credited in one of them, though. That's true. Uh, but regardless, uh, this week we are talking about Praise the Orc. Um, he's an orc, yet still praiseworthy. That sounds improbable. Uh, Bill, I believe you have the... Uh... I have the synopsis on Usha World. Uh, the virtual reality game that enthralled the entire world. Elder Lord! In the midst of Abris, the justice of a single orc begins. That's Elder it. Lord. Yeah, yeah like that's Overlord the name of the game. With elders? Nope. Uh, two separate words. Capital Elder, space, capital Lord. Lord with an E at the end? Nope. Oh, man, so it's not British Lord. Nope. Nope. Just, just a regular one. Just an old one. Just a super old guy. Uh, and the editor's synopsis says, Praise the Orc is about... Jung Ian, a cafe owner with a dark past. Dark. That's, that's a Korean, by the way. Jung Ian. <laughs> yep. Jumping into the world of virtual reality in order to protect his sister from any predators. Chris. However, things may not be as simple as they seem, as the world and its inhabitants prove to be much deeper than he believed them to be. Witness as he explores the lands of Elder Lord as an orc, a species labeled as the game creator's mistake. Damn. Making fast friends <laughs> and defeating any and all before him. Holy shit, how bad are orcs for them to be like, what a mistake. Sounds this was terrible. Like, really bad. Okay. Trash. So here's the issue, right? You start playing a game, and you've just logged in. You've bought this expensive capsule. You've paid this, you know, your fee to, to buy the game and start playing. You log in. 
It's a virtual reality game. It's incredibly realistic. Everything's awesome. And, you know, you're looking through all the classes and you're like, well, there's human, there's elf. You've heard your friends tell all these stories about how awesome the starting areas are and how, like, wonderful all the NPCs are and how there's all these people that will be there to help you in the beginning. And then you see, or you, you see like, oh, cool. Those all sound good. Let me, uh, I didn't hear any stories about the orc though. Let me try that. And then you pick orc. And you wake up and you're like, all right, cool, cool, cool. Let's go to the training area. And you start training, you know, start, start hitting up against the, uh, the old, uh, yo training, training dummy, yo training dummy. And you know, you start getting tired and you're like, all right, cool. And you like stop. And the instructor's like, Hey, what are you doing? Keep hitting that. Is that all the strength you have? What the fuck? And he punches you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh, okay, okay. All right, I'm sorry. I'm getting EverQuest flashbacks right now where, like, you roll a troll and you start in, like, everywhere else starts in, like, a city or, like, a beautiful mound of trees and forests and flowers. When you're a troll, you start in, like, an awful, awful cave. Where if you make a wrong decision or the wrong move, they kill you. Incredible. You level slower than everyone. Everywhere hates you. And everything is unforgiving. Is that is this is this what's going oh, on right now? Yes, absolutely. Every person is like shitty apprentice. <laughs> you're not worth shit. Uh, it's like try harder. Keep hitting it. You think your enemies are gonna care on the battlefield? Yeah, it's hard. Nobody cares. Life's Keep working. Hard. <laughs> Like these are the people that constantly surround you and you have to like try your hardest and do your very, very best. Now, now the thing about playing Elder Lord as a game and everyone plays it, it's like super wow. It's it, like wow it's VR. Super wow, but deep dive VR. Yeah, yes. essentially it's, it's very much, uh, it's, it has a lot of similarities to legendary Moonlight Sculptor in its, Ooh. um, in its structural setup in that it is, a. a Virtual MMO, but it doesn't have like the sword art online, like you're they're trapped in the world kind of um issue. It it has more of a um like you he's traveling between the world. He has life on Earth and he has life on in in the game. And he like he's living both of them simultaneously. And like what's really fun is that like the story starts out and his story his life on Earth is much more important. And as he starts to the book progresses and the thing more he experiences more things in Elder Lord, like he starts to become the orc more than the human. Ooh. Yeah. And like the focus of the story, not even like just in terms of even in time, in terms of time spent just becomes more and more on the elder Lord story and less and less on the earth story. Elder Lord has like a status window as most MMO games would, but one of the statuses you can have is called assimilation rate. Uh, it depends. It's how, how into it you are. Uh, so like, if you have a 50%, you know, you you understand it's a game, but you're like, yeah, I'm in it to play it. You know, I'm a I'm a dude. So you feel 50% of what's happening. And oh. your skills are 50% as effective. Ooh. So, that sounds but so if you're, also if you're hundred percent, yeah, you if feel you're all that if you're pain committed RP. Yeah, the, the game has an artificial cap of 90%. Um, it won't go above that rating. For safety reasons, probably. For, for safety, exactly, yeah. Because, like, going above that, like, actually risks damage to the user kind of a thing. Or that's, you know, the explanation given. This technology sounds awesome. And it is also, pretty sweet. For, I don't want to think about the dirty stuff in this in this world if your assimilation rate is high. But yes, uh, also, yes, our peers are just awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The more, like, our peers are literally stronger than other people because the game rewards them. For assimilating into the system and like believing they are who they are. For the first time in MMO history, the RPers are good. The RP servers are the hardest <laughs> servers, not the PvP servers. <laughs> oh no, oh, Jesus. It's one server. And it's all RP versus PvP. Yeah. And this is a really fun world because it is it is brutal. It is not like a balanced world in the sense. Like people are stronger. People you you get experience for killing users. No. Oh. No. Oh. And, and there is no penalty and no tracing PKers unless someone is watching you do it. Awesome. Damn. Damn. I love this game. So already. like when people say orcs are a mistake, orcs are literally hunted by other users of other races. Like, cause they're like, Oh shit. An orc user, easy prey. He doesn't have anyone to back him up and he'll just give me a shit. He's basically a mob. 
Like they are oh. literally like other people in Elder Lord view orcs literally oh. as mobs. Oh no. Damn. Yeah. So like whenever I say it's super wow, imagine if the Alliance won and the horde was like a little like piddling group of dudes. They're just by themselves. Yes. And everywhere else is Alliance territory. Yes. And you just get killed on sight. Yes. But see, here's the thing about this story, right? Enter our main character, Jung Ian. Um, codename Raven. Ah, oh, good old Raven. Um, because the, the fun part about Jung Ian is that he is not a person who is seeking his fortune. He is not a person who needs anything in life. He is a person who has already solved his money issues and all of those things for the rest of his life. He um was a special forces member. Oh. In like the like US? a dark dark covert ops unit. <laughs> like they describe it at some point in the story that when you sent them in it was a given they were going to succeed. You like they just succeeded missions. Yeah. Uh and- Korean SEAL Team 6. Yeah, and actually, like, the scene where we see this happen is pretty great because, like, his little sister, who is basically his entire life's mission at this point, in his mind, is to protect his little sister and provide for her. Uh, Parents have died. Of course. Yeah, and that's actually why he went to the military, to be able to have the ability to pay for her. But then he got conscripted into this, like, special unit, saved a bunch of people. And, like, so his little sister gets in a fight because of one of her friends and, like, this asshole who was hitting on her. And, like, the asshole is, like, a rich guy whose daddy owns a company. And so, like, he starts causing trouble. And the dad, like, is being arrogant and shitty and all the people are scared of him. And then, like, Ian's like, no, it's fine. Just go home. You all take care of it. It's fine. And, like, he's, like, he's always, like, chill. He's, like, never worried. And he's, like, it's cool. And he just, like, turns around and makes a phone call. And we just see one of these people who's, like, this, like, one of the people. Like, (laughs) the people who were in the room when it happened. (laughs) like level kind of people are sitting there and she's like, Oh shit. It's the guy who saved my life when I was a fucking hostage. (laughs) that I've always wanted to pay back. (laughs) What can I do for you? (laughs) And like later on, we see this kid being like, what happened? I'll apologize. All our clients left. (laughs) Oh my God. Yeah. Mm -mm. Um, Talking all that good shit. But, like, this is the kind of, like, life he lived in the past. But, like, now he's, like, he's made his money. He's retired. He owns a a coffee shop. Like, that's what he just does with his time. And, like, his sister is playing Elder Lord because everyone is playing Elder Lord. And um, she sucks at it. Like, really, really badly sucks at it. Dies to a rabbit. Dies to literally a rabbit. Oh, no. Not even like a dire rabbit. And is... all of her friends make fun of her for it. Yeah. Oh, he can't, I mean, he can't have that. According, well, no, she, I mean, he, I don't think she ever told him that. So like that, that goes on. He doesn't him. know. But essentially she she's like, bad. she's like, who do I know that's awesome at everything all the time? Mm, my brother. I'll get him to start playing and then his character will kick everyone's ass and I'll just like piggyback on him to success. The what tried and true, like <laughs> like uh, RPG bad at person so, strategy. So yeah, so Jung Ian is this person who is like very mature because he's seen and done some shit. Boy, has he? Um, and well, so like he's already like he's kind of like figured shit out. He's kind of like already like a Zen monk kind of guy. He's been in wars, you know. Like he just kind of like enjoys coffee and like the per- his only employee like was, like, down on her luck and, like, couldn't figure out what to do with her life and, like, walked in and, like, they just sat at a table for a while and he's like, you have a good smile? And she just, like, smiled as big as she could and he's like, you're hired. Wow. Like, <laughs> what a nice guy. He's just a he's good a really dude. chill dude. Yeah. No, that's... But it seems like he's good at everything. He's seen some shit. Maybe being an orc, it's perfect for him because he can just succeed at the orc requirements. Well, I mean, yes, absolutely, because he is a soldier, so like he gets he's, training. Yeah, he's already mentally like regimented. Yeah, ready like to he go. understands. He's disciplined. Is he the only orc, or is there other orc guys? There are orcs, but they are few and far between. And like most orcs are like laughed down. Like there's like a secret orc brotherhood. Awesome. But yeah. there's all these like it's it's cool though because like NPCs are oftentimes stronger and more important to the the story of the world than actual users are in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, like, there are all these, like, legendary orc NPCs that, like, when you become an orc, like, you walk into a hall and you have to, like, choose the path of one of these legendary orcs. And the one human. And the one human, who is actually who Crocta picks because he's the great sword wielder who betrayed humans to fight for the side of the orcs because he thought the human side was unjust. Uh, orcs are I mean, cool good hell, I people, good people. And that's I the like point. that guy. Orcs are awesome because, like, they are a warrior tribe and their entire life is built around the concept of Bultar. Um, being which, alive. Yeah, it, it is being alive, but it also is honor. Like, it's the... Many men, like, you know, have died, but, like, every, all men die, but, like, a few men have truly been alive. Yeah. It's that concept of alive. Like, to be an orc to them does not mean, like, staying alive when they say Boltar, or, like, I'm alive. It doesn't mean I'm alive. It means I am living true to my beliefs, what is right. What is good so, in my heart? The entire clan founded upon having a strong Dal heart. Essentially, <laughs> yeah. Like they have, they have literally seven rules, and it's like warriors don't attack unarmed opponents. Warriors always, um, like yeah, warriors do not shame the gods. Warriors always uh, defend, like they the defenseless. You know, like yeah, it's a it, bunch of stuff. Like like you never never attack the weak. Always fight for like the dude, justice. It, like it, this is just this. Just wow, this is wow orcs. The, the no, no, Lock no. Lock Ogar. This is a goddamn orc paladins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is yeah. literally like orc paladins, and they're all like <laughs> intense. Like, there's this orc who was gonna be a warrior, but then he saw people farming, and he's like, he fell in love with the lifestyle of farmers. So he decided to become an orc farmer, which then meant he was going to become the best farmer because that's what it means to be alive to him. They're great at everything. Yeah, they're just awesome, and they, like, pick a path, and they do that thing, and, like, they live their life, and orcs, like, die a lot because they sometimes have to go into situations that they shouldn't. Bultar. Bultar. Gotta do it. But it's, it is, it's just great. Give, give me some, give me some stuff. I, I, I want to hear one. Give, give me one. Um, okay, so he goes to this town. And it's a town that doesn't accept, it's an elven town, and it doesn't accept outsiders. Oh, okay, time out. Fuck elves, by the way. Elves I are always elves. assholes. They're awful in everything. It's fun. The ones where he starts are all shitty, and then the ones in the uncultured civilization he goes and explores later are awesome. Yeah. No, well, they, mostly. They have the world tree, though, so they're kind of like the better elves. It, uh, they're like uncultured elves, but they're still cool. It, it's fine. But no, actually, elves do turn out to be shitty people in this one. Just mostly. everywhere. I mean, there's some good ones. But... Yeah, no, no. Take that back. The sh uncivilized ones were racist, too. They were well, just... I mean, yes, but like the ones God. actually at the world tree were pretty cool. Why are they so consistently awful? Yeah, know. elves are like, they are they are consistently regarded as racist and just Pretentious snobby. Least, yeah, yeah, snobby. And Snobby's the worst a good way to put pick it. them because they all oh, elves are pretty. I'm going to play an elf. Mm. Half elves that's are a terrible reason the to worst. Pick an elf. No, that's the only valid do. reason to pick an elf is because you want to enhance your magic or you want to be better with bows. Yep, that's it. <laughs> um, but no, it's a uh, it's a little town called Arnhem that's right outside of uh, where he starts. What Orcrox? Yeah, Orcrox, like the Orc Fortress. And there's like there's a whole story that goes along that like causes him to leave the Orc area after like gaining the respect of his like his mentors. Well, hold sort on. of. Let's not skip over the story where he's in the woods, like his first moment of being goddamn hero machine. Uh, so. He what he's in the woods and there are these three what three users that walk up and think he's an npc oh yeah yeah. he's got it um you could tell who's who everyone who's a user has like a, a white like star fi uh mark on their forehead but like if you're just like wearing a bandana you can't see it so a lot of people if people see a powerful orc they just assume it's an npc because no one would actually like everyone who plays an orc just resets before they hit level 10 yeah. wow <laughs> It is just that rare to see an actual person playing an orc. And like, so he, so they see this obviously an NPC orc. So they're like, all right, cool. We're going to kill him and get some points. You know, easy points. Let's show off to our friends. <laughs> and then they just sort of get destroyed. Yeah. They're just like all instantly beheaded. 
because he just oh. like he like oh. he like pretends like he's scared for a little bit and then he's like boom 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 <laughs> and like the last dude has his weapon but like drops to his knees and just like just 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 kill me quick like that sort of moment like but oh. it's cool because he dropped his weapon and he's like no nah, i don't warriors, know people warriors who aren't armed no oh he, no he, did. he he held onto his weapon so the dude just, oh he did hold onto his weapon that was his mistake. chopped his head off yeah. dropped the weapon Gotta drop the he weapon when you're I actually mean, he was up. a user, so they just turn into white particles and respawn later with like a a, a death penalty. It's goddamn wow. Okay, <laughs> it's pretty great though. Um, but yeah, so like Arnon, the city he was going to, uh, they don't let others in unless you've like proven your usefulness to the city. So there's this typical thing. There's like this kind of natural overgrown predator that exists outside one of the, the walls. So they tell people to go hunt them and thin them out. Essentially, they look like overgrown rhinos. Yeah, overgrown rhinos. So he goes out, starts like, uh, oh yeah, and the the guard. He was like sweet talking the the guard who was very cute. Oh, um, not even really like, just because he was like, I want to get in, so I'm trying to sweet talk the NPC. Okay, but Everyone. you can sweet talk NPCs in this. Yeah, you can. Yeah, it's LMS. No, and it it is like NPCs are all individually like every single one of them has their own AI. Every single one of them is unique. Every single one of them is incredibly realistic. Has their own like is unique like there's not a replacement for them yeah they die they're just gone they're gone from the world there's a there's a guy who who's at the orcrox fortress he dies he does not exist if anyone else spawns as an orc like they just show up at the starting area and he's gone people tell stories about him oh shit yeah they die of old age or they have to be killed oh no he was killed but but who killed the orcrox guy that's spoilers i'm gonna let you get into that yeah that's that's, spoil it don't make them spoil I mean, I'm, it. I'm just saying that's messed up. Who killed? It was fucked the, up. The, it was actually quite fucked up. Guy. Yeah. It sucked. That's it sucked rude. real hard. Um. But it anyways. is a major plot point for the story. <laughs> so he he he's tasked to go fight these rhinos, but before oh, right, he does so, yeah. he gets curt. He basically gets silenced by this this the guard because yeah. she's like, "Oh, shut up!" and then casts a silence spell on him, so he can't talk. Oh, is that bad? Uh, not, Does he not cast really. spells? No, no it, it sets up an awesome scene, so it's fine. He doesn't cast spells. He just swings a sword. Okay. He is an orc warrior. If I was a cast, I'd be so upset. I'm like, I'm never flirting with an NPC <laughs> ever again. I didn't know they could just casually <laughs> prevent me from sp- casting all magic. She's like, it'll wear off eventually. It's fine. Um, So he goes out and he's just this mute orc, like killing rhinos and shit. So he's doing that for a while. And then he sees someone else that's like about to get hit. And he's like, oh shit. And he goes and saves him. And then the other guy's like, why would you do that? And then he like he can't speak, so he just is like, thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and then he like runs off and goes so up somebody else. Cool. <laughs> and like and then like that guy like sees what he's doing, like going and helping other people, and they just kind of form this squad that's like the the rescue squad that goes around and helps people that are in trouble. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> so he becomes like a a superhero or superhero. Yeah, exactly. And he yeah. starts to, like and people are just like. Thumbs up works. This is it's also awesome. cool. Yeah, and, and every time they do it, they just like look at each other and they're like, "Yeah, yeah. thumbs up." Just like so like a signal. <laughs> so, so that happened through the night, and at the the start of the next day, this one guy shows up and he's like talking and talking and all this good shit because he's like got all this high level equipment and he's bringing these girls with him and he wants to look impressive. And he sees an orc. He's, he's like, like, "Oh, an orc! Free experience. Let's go do it. I can look good in front of these bitches." It's like Sorry, I'll guys, kill this. I'll mm. kill this mm. orc monster <laughs> that before he hurts you, ladies. Oh nice. no! Uh, he gets bodied, and everyone's like, "Don't do it!" And so Crocto beats the shit out of him. He doesn't kill him because then the guy like drops his weapon, and everyone's like, "He's like, oh god, oh, I'm gonna get killed!" And everyone's like, "Kill him! Kill the motherfucker! Kill him!" And I- then like he's like, <laughs> "No!" It just shakes his head, and they're like, "Why?" And he's like, "Crap! I can't speak." So he just walks over to this rock and carves into it. A warrior doesn't attack unarmed people. Oh, that's sick. That's so sick. Is that just there forever now? Yeah. Oh, that's so and sick. And then he just gives a thumbs up and everyone's like, yeah, <laughs> And so like. And oh, yeah, by the way, he became named Crocta when he actually became a warrior. Up until that point, no one had, he didn't realize it until this point, but he had never, no one had asked him what his name was. Like, none of the actual orcs had ever asked him his name. And then when he became a warrior, 
they gave him a name, and then they were and they were like, "What is your name?" And it's oh, like Crocked. Up. They, well, he, he chose it. I guess. It's he had a name. He had a name, and he spoke it. It was like within the deep recesses of his being, which is like, you know, like a friggin' shaman mind trance. Oh, so basically, in orc society, you're not an orc until you're a warrior, till you're or a shaman, or a shaman, but till like, you become acknowledged by other orcdom. Pretty much, yeah. So he did not have a name. He was just a dude. He was just an apprentice. <laughs> he was just a shitty, worthless apprentice until he became a real orc. Man, orcs sound like the best race. They what are the definitely the best race. And only a few actual players realize this. That's why there's a small, tightly banned group of orc players. Because they're all just like cool bros who are like, yeah, orcs, bull tar. Oh man, I really <laughs> hope that a deep plot line is that there is a cabal of uh, high level orc players that uh, f- like fund everybody else killing the lower level orc players so they don't have too many orcs. So not en- like not everybody finds out how good orcs are. And no, then that's everybody's never going to That happen. would never happen because that's not what orcs are about. Every single person that actually gets into orcs is like super about bull tar. Mm. Yeah, everyone who's <laughs> into orcs. Orcs wants more people to be into orcs. I see. Uh, like, there's just a sh- like a good huger shaman who's like number one orc Magushui. <laughs> yeah, no. The, the, uh. And every time he like posts anything, you always see all these responses that are like, "Shut up, orcs are terrible. <laughs> Reset your character." And that's the thing. Like, these things are recorded. Like, YouTube exists. It's called like Uvid, but YouTube exists, and people take. Elder Lord videos, and those are what top the charts. Everybody watches Elder Lord videos. Of course. Yeah. So, like, all of these things that he does keep getting, like, recorded and posted, and people are like, who's the who's this orc? This orc is this mysterious awesome. orc NPC because he always wears a headband, so no one knows he's a user, and so everyone assumes he's this orc of justice. He gets fan clubs. <laughs> he has three distinct fan clubs. He has three distinct fan clubs. The first of which is the the answer to the subtitle of the story because it is the fan club is literally called "He's an Orc Yet Praiseworthy." Because <laughs> <laughs> he just like okay, so whenever he makes whenever he goes around saving people, like he saves so many people for so long that like the person who like one of the 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 guys from the city, like not the mayor, but like a couple steps down. Comes out as like, all right, look, I will make you an honorary citizen if you do this for like two days. And like, we will, st- he sets up a brigade, a literal, the Arnhem Rescue Brigade, where he just has a rescue set <laughs> and he goes around <laughs> helping people. And that's a tradition from then on. There's just an official rescue squad outside of the thing from then on. He has like, altered the landscape of this game. And he does it everywhere he goes because he's so fucking sincere by the way his his assimilation rate like hits 80s when he like at the beginning of the game which is like where the top people are actually the top people were like in the 70s yeah no nobody no like nobody wants to go that high because it hurts so much and so but like, he didn't put any limit on his assimilation because he's like no i'm i'm into this and that's like the fun part about the story because jung ian as a human is kind of done with life and kind of doesn't like where humanity is he feels like it's dirty like there's a lot of people that backstab each other, and like, I mean, he's, he's, seen, he's seen the dark the... parts of the world, so like, he knows that part of humanity, and he doesn't like it. And so when he meets the orcs, he's like, "This is how people are supposed to be," and he so falls in love with that concept and like that honor, that bultar, that like, he assimilates into the game because like he wants it to be real. Yeah, no, he, he, the more he connects to the, the NPCs around him, the more he, like, feels these aren't artificial intelligence. These are actual beings. And the more he feels that way, the more it is real to him. Thus, the better he can perform. These, these people are better than real people, so they're real to me. He's but best yeah, world. No. It's a, it's a very, very fun story in general, but, like, this is really the bull tar essence is really where it diverges from legendary moonlight sculptor. Like legendary moonlight sculptor is about weed gaining levels and skills and abilities and using them to ridiculous effects. Praise the orc is about an orc that is falling in love with the world and becoming stronger as a byproduct of that. Yeah, no, he gains strength errantly 
Like, the, the system just decides, oh, shit, yeah, no, gain two, three levels, gain a billion ex- uh, achievement points, I don't care. Like, and, like, all of your skills upgrade by, like, two but ranks. to him, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to him. And, and to the point where, like, he'll level up, and they won't actually talk about the fact that he leveled up for, like, five or six chapters. It'll just get mentioned in, like... Yeah, when he had when he def- did this thing of five or six chapters ago, he had gotten all this stuff happened. We didn't mention it until now because it really wasn't fucking important. It that sounds like D and D to me, where like what people talk about is not man. Remember when I leveled and got these stats? It's more like remember when this awesome shit happened and I enjoyed it here. That's I learned a really cool is. technique from how I beat the shit out of that dragon, and like that's why I really like this story is because it's not it's not about the the power. It's not about like the the Dragon Ball Z. Oh, like that's never what the story is about. It's always about the motivation of Crocta and like why he's making the choices he's making and like who the people are that put him in this scenario. It, it it's one of the few games where feeling better at the game makes you better at the game. That and sounds a, great. There's this group that like runs around that are all like about role playing. And like one of them is always like my sword is hungry for blood. No death. No, D- my enemies. No justice. <laughs> <laughs> and his entire party, like between all of this is like, please don't just no stop. Please. Oh, man. We've all heard it. <laughs> Everyone knows. It's justice. It's pretty great. Like it's it's got a lot of very fun characters. We haven't really talked about like his party. He gets like Tio, the manly gnome. Wait, no, save that uh, for our final segment. Yeah, yeah I'm getting that, there. Uh, Tio the mighty. I yo yo. What does Tio right, do? If for no, I'm gonna pretty much bring this up because there's no other reason than I really actually do want to talk about Tio's weapon, yes. which is fucking sweet. Yeah, it's called General. Yes, and it starts out as just kind of like a blunderbuss esque shotgun. Okay, uh, it was like a rifle. Yeah, well, it's it's rifle and. <sighs> I mean, like it's I, both. It swaps between them. That's the fun part of that general. It's a magical, never, no, no ending to your bullets. Like it, it drains like your stamina to shoot. Okay, so like- it's just a rifle or a shotgun or whatever. Eventually, towards the end of the story, becomes like a Gatling, like Vulcan. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, at one point, he makes an actual sniper rifle. Incredible, uh, general. General is just looking sweet, down. and Tio is great. And I say this as a stalwart gnome hater. See, I adore gnomes. Just the gnomiest I'm a big gnome fan. I, I just hate them. I, 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 it stems back to 2.0 and the fact that they could only be illusionists and they were great caster class, but illusionists on up oh, 2.0 can't use evocation magic, which is basically why I play wizards. So, oh, yeah, you're right. It's just the, I just think about fond days of 3.5 and playing a gnome and getting the biggest fucking weapon possible. Guys, guys, let's save uh, this for our sister podcast, D and Don't, reviewing D and D. That's a good name, right? That one. Yeah, uh, we good. recorded it. This is the best way to write it down. Um, but I think that's probably a good place to stop. There's a lot more to this story, but it's all on or above the level of the stories we were talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, this sounds, I can't, I'm going to start reading this as soon as I get, we finish this episode. I have to. It's, this sounds amazing. It's very fun. I want to see, I want to see what happens to these dudes because they like, you told me one of, one of the guys in the starting area dies. I want to know what happened. Well, why they did that? I have to find that out. Yeah, man. It's fucked up. They said it was fucked up like a bunch. I bet it's real fucked up, Richard. I mean, I'm certain it is. It literally... What if it's a twist? What if it's not fucked up? Mm. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I am the time. kind of person that would do that. But, <laughs> the, like, the implicate, like, he's still dealing with the fallout where I am 145 chapters uh, in of a 226 chapter book series. Thus far. Yes. No, this, this, this story completed. is complete, by the way. It's um, it's translated on Uchi World. Um. There is also like bonus chapters, like side stories that are currently that Rainbow Turtles currently translating at at uh, at their leisure, um, oh. that are unedited. But the first two have been out. Apparently, I think there's like six or eight or something like that. Good God. Um, but they're actually a lot of fun. I've been enjoying them. Um, 
They're kind of like extra epilogue chapters, which is I, always I, fun. I love those in Korean novels. Epilogue chapters are always super fun because you get to see your characters enjoying the fruits of their labor. Shout yeah. out breakers. Korean novels tend to like end right at the end of their climax. And so like you, you feel sometimes that you don't get enough falling action. Yeah. And the epilogue chapters really help with that. You know, mm. you know when you say, yeah, you're, you're not wrong. The only one that doesn't, doesn't do that, that hasn't done that was like LMS. Everyone else is just ended. And then, you know, you're yeah. done. But um, I I do highly recommend Praise York. It is not an incredibly lengthy read. It's not too hard to, to dig your teeth into. Um, and there are, uh, like, there are certain points that just become very much page turners. Um, especially, like, the last, like, I don't know, 20 or so chapters. Um, very, very fun climax. I really, really appreciated the ending. Um, but anyway, this has been Turning the Path of Heaven. Um, you the can last segment. I'm still getting there. We do the work first and then that we end on that. We end with the play, but we first do the work and the work <laughs> is you can follow us on the social medias by going to, or by looking up tiger roller coaster on Facebook or going to a uh, tiger coaster on Twitter or finding our weekly post in on Reddit on the novel translation subreddit where you probably hopefully found this already. It's, you should do that and, and go review or leave us a review. We'll read it. I promise. I don't have one to read this week. Not even a fake one. So like, I don't know, guys. You guys suck. You guys, are, <laughs> you guys are really, you guys really let me down on this review front. But no, uh, shout outs to Rainbow Turtle and Super Posh Posh. That was um, a fake review. One of our listeners and the editor of Praise the Orc. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. Hey, what'd you think about us talking about your book? Tell so us I, about that. But that I, do, um, I do very much appreciate you um, recommending this because it was a great read. Um, also, you can soon visit our website at tiger co- tigercoaster.com. Ooh. Ooh. And I know I keep saying that we're going to be streaming our episodes eventually, but we're gonna, like, fucking soon, like, next week. Like, really? Shut up. What's happening? <laughs> We're trying hard on it. We're we'll trying. Get it's it's close. We got uh, lights. It's it's it's. Uh. Once we're streaming, you could have seen all the thumbs up we were doing. Oh man, <laughs> the <laughs> thumbs up one. were so hardcore. <laughs> so many thumbs up. Um, it's just very too. visually evocative in the novel itself. Um, but anyway, this has been Training the Path of the Heavens. Thank you so much for listening. Um, please review us on uh, iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, subscribe. Tell us. Tell a friend about us. Um, you know, if we review a novel that you particularly like, use us to recommend us, uh, use us to recommend novels to your friends. Um, yeah, it's like a 30 minute version of what you can't bear to do to your friends. We'll do it for you. (laughs) Um, but we do very much appreciate you listening. Thank you very much. And, uh, we'll see you next week. Um, let's see, we just did Arcarota three. And so we're up for a Chinese novel. I think we're going to be doing King's Avatar. The King's Avatar. Probably my favorite Chinese novel. It's really good guys. Nice. Well, uh, that's... Yeah, I'm going to be trying to dig my teeth into that for next week. All right. Well, uh, that brings us to our final segment, which is we didn't even get to talk about where we talk about some of the ridiculous shit in these books that we haven't even gotten to discuss in the whole podcast that we just damn did. So, hey, Kenny. And hey, Bill. We didn't talk oh, about Jesus. Ogre Slayer. How can we not talk about Ogre Slayer? His great sword. We didn't get to talk about Oh god, uh, the dragon's den where the dragon collects friends, not treasure. Oh. The, the oh. friends who all learn kung fu or did... Oh. <laughs> it's uh. great. Um we didn't even get to talk about um his necromancer friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that dude's fucked up. Uh we didn't even talk about literally anything from the north. Yeah, we didn't get to talk about great chieftain Crocta. <laughs> Big oh, chieftain Crocta. <laughs> he became a great chieftain. Boy, did he. And in the grandest of fashions. Uh, we didn't talk about uh, The Last Hunter. Uh, we didn't talk about Behemoth. Behemoth was awesome. Behemoth was sweet. Uh, um, Chesswood. <laughs> we didn't talk about Chesswood. There's a lot of stuff we didn't talk about in this novel. Yeah. Um, yeah. We didn't talk about Linux or the Shaman, dude. Linux. We sort of talked about Linux, just not by name. Yeah, true that. Mm. He, he was one of, one of the people in the original Orc Village. Oh. Is he the one that dies? I'm not going to say. <laughs> it sounds like you just we did. We didn't talk about it. We didn't talk about it. 
I fucking got you. Ha <laughs> ha. I made you spoil the book. Ha 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 ha. But anyway, go read Praise the Orc and then uh, come listen to us next week when we talk about King's Avatar. Woo, it's going to be fun. That just reminded me of an awesome Korean novel, guys, when you said The Last Hunter. There's a Korean novel called The First Hunter, and it's fucking awesome, and I want to cover that as well. Okay. Is that going to be our next Korean novel? No. Nah. No. Okay. That's going to be down the line. All right. There's a lot of those. But I'll, uh, I'll leave you guys with this. Are you alive? We'll talk, brothers. Tiger Roller Coaster Productions. Tigers are scary. You try to get off.